Developing this morning a suspected murder possibly linked to a man's disappearance. By the end of the day, three people could be charged. Kai Edwards is in the newsroom with an update on this investigation. Good morning, Kaya. Good morning. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office granted an extension on filing those charges to today. So that's what we're watching for right now. But already a lot of developments in this case. For one, less than 24 hours ago, a body was found in Woodbury. So now the big question this morning is whether it is that of the man who went missing exactly one week ago today, William Albrecht. Police say he was last seen at this house in Bloomington, and they believe one woman and two men were also there. Police have arrested all three. A case like this, our, our thoughts and our prayers go out to the uh, Albrecht family. Uh, we have been in contact with them, letting them know kind of the steps of the investigation. Bloomington police have shared limited information about where in Woodbury the body was found. They described it only as an open area outdoors. Back to you. Now here's a look at some other top stories in your morning rush. A pretty scary moment for patients and staff at North Memorial Hospital in Robbinsdale. A huge fight between 50 to 75 people broke out inside the emergency room yesterday morning. It forced hospital officials to lock down the ER. Police from six different agencies were called to break it up. No word yet on what started the fight. The Minnesota Department of Health just released new numbers on RSV cases in the state. And here's where we're at. There were 27 hospitalizations from RSV this week. That's up from 23 just a week ago and puts us at 87 cases so far this season. Of those cases, 65 of them involve children less than two years old. We're told that's about average for this time of year, but a good reminder of why you want to be careful around those young loved ones coming up this Thanksgiving. A big recall in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and several other states involving blackberries. The berries were sold at Fresh Time grocery stores, and the FDA warns they have been linked to a hepatitis A outbreak. If you bought blackberries from the store between September 9th and 30th, you should toss them. Fans are remembering Vikings great Freddie the Foot. Fred Cox died yesterday at 80 years old. He was the team's place kicker back in the 60s and 70s, an all-time leading scorer. Cox also invented the Nerf football. Remember how much fun you had with that as a kid? And that's your Friday Morning Rush. In our digital dive, a story with well over 3,000 likes and hundreds of shares in less than 24 hours. As you can see, yeah, a lot of folks online talking about it. But before I get to all of your comments this morning, here's what everyone's talking about. There's a new program out there at the Animal Humane Society that gives terminally ill animals the chance to live out their last days with their own family. When owner Michael Kylo Kittleson adopted Mabel, she knew she didn't have long to live. She was 10 years old and had congestive heart failure. Mabel was placed in the Humane Society's hospice program. It's the way I'd, I'd want to go out with people who love me surrounding me, so um, it's special to be able to do that. Yeah, Mabel got a little over a year with her new owners who say she was living her best and final days a happy dog. The Humane Society works with people who adopt hospice pets to understand their care and then they walk them through it. They also help with the end of a pet's life when it comes to that point. Like I said, we got a lot of comments, you guys, on this story. So many people talking about it. Uh, a lot of folks saying they want to look into doing this. Mm -hmm. Others saying they couldn't even imagine like, doing it. Mm -hmm. Be hard, but kudos to all those people who have giant hearts and want to give these pets, you know, a good end. And they have a level of emotional yeah. stability that I don't think I quite have. Yeah. It would be hard to take something and get attached and then knowing it's only got a right. little while mm -hmm. left. But yeah, for the people who do it, congratulations. And a reminder today, the Minneapolis Animal Care and Control Shelter is waiving all adoption fees. It's to help find rescued pets' homes before the holidays. All adoptions will be handled on a first-come, first-served basis. And we're looking at a chilly start to the day today. Temperatures uh, in the teens and low 20s, but sunshine will be returning mid-30s today. But the 40s are back for what looks... And a look at the roads. It's been quiet for the Friday morning commute, which is always great to hear. This is a live look in the South Metro Highway 5. Still looking good. All of the more on your Sunrise Drive coming up in a few minutes. Yeah, you know what that sound means. It's the gig list, a list of the top local music shows you should put on your radar for the weekend with the help of our friend Andrea Swenson of the local show on The Current. So if you're looking for something tonight, Charlie Parr's album releases at the Cedar Cultural Center. More on that in a bit. 
And Great Gone Too Soon tribute should be fun. We'll be at the Dakota Jazz Club tomorrow. It is London-born musician turned one of Minnesota's busiest. Katie Vernon is at Hook and Ladder Theater. Love her message in her songs. And the Nalo uh, Garage Rock Kitty Cat Club. And then if you like the ukulele, well, Jess Morrison's EP releases at a cute little place called Honey in Northeast Minneapolis. Big name on the list is Charlie Parr. So here's a snippet of one of his new songs, Jubilee. That's fun, right? Cooked. Yeah, I know. Here's the thing. Parr is actually sold out. He sold out yesterday's show, too, but he's too big of a name we had to mention. So maybe you'll get lucky. Score, score one somehow. And also want to mention for our producer, Jordy, that Wilco is in town and they're performing at the Palace Theater in St. Paul. Yeah, three nights or something, mm -hmm. three shows. Well, mm -hmm. there, Jordy, you have some options then. <laughs> All right. Well, she took the DNA test. Turns out she's 100% that Grammy nominee, but not everyone thinks Lizzo should win. So in 20 minutes, we dive into the controversy surrounding one of her nominations. Then living in a digital world, coming up, how your social media habits could be influencing your kids and not in a good way. And remember on Monday when I told you that this security checkpoint was closed between the hotel and Terminal 1? Well, starting this morning, it is back open, as you can see. Coming up in 20 minutes, uh, I'll tell you when you can access this line.